Can you believe it's been two months and the Russia versus Ukraine war is still going on? Not only that, the matter between them is worsening day by day, coiling up a stink of World War III. The world is against Russia, and European countries and the US are trying to stop the war wholeheartedly. But did they succeed? What's the status of the last two weeks of the war? Well, in this video, we are going to discuss the scenario of Russia versus Ukraine over the last 14 days of the war. Hello, viewers. Welcome to the Ukraine War. We are here to deliver you updates on all the new political moves regarding the Russia-Ukraine conflicts, the casualties, strategies, and aftermaths of the ongoing war in detail. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss any of those. Having said that, let's jump into today's topic. The dispute between Russia and Ukraine experienced no significant improvement so far. Ukraine, on the 53rd day of the war, has requested $50 billion in financial assistance from the G7 nations and is considering issuing zero-coupon bonds to help cover a war-related budget shortfall. According to Ukraine's Prime Minister, the remaining Ukrainian soldiers in the southern port city of Mariupol are still battling. Ukraine and Russia were unable to reach an agreement on humanitarian convoys to evacuate citizens from war-torn regions. Ukraine's president has requested more weaponry on the 54th day, calling any delay a license for Russia to kill Ukrainians. In his speech, he urged countries to contribute weaponry, stating that Ukraine's destiny rests with them. Following the expiration of a Russian ultimatum for remaining Ukrainian troops in Mariupol, Ukraine has promised to fight until the end. An unverified picture purports to show the Russian battleship Moskva minutes after being struck by a Ukrainian missile. According to Zelensky, French President Emmanuel Macron has been asked to visit Ukraine to examine for himself proof that Russian forces have committed genocide. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February, the UN Refugee Agency reports that 4,869,019 Ukrainians have fled the nation, up 32,574 from Saturday's tally. On the 55th day, Russian missile and artillery troops targeted 1,260 targets in Ukraine overnight, Russia's defense ministry says. Anti-aircraft forces shot down a Ukrainian MiG-29 fighter in the Donetsk area. Russia has demanded that the Ukrainian military stationed in Mariupol lay down their guns once more. Greece has detained a crude oil Russian ship off the coast of Evia. On the 56th day, Russia's defense ministry said that Ukrainian forces will be allowed to lay down their arms Wednesday. Since Russian forces entered Ukraine on February 24, more than 5 million people have fled the nation. 90% of those who have left are women and children, with another 7.1 million people displaced within Ukraine. Vladimir Putin, on the subsequent day, has instructed his soldiers not to invade Mariupol, the final major Ukrainian bastion. The Russian defense minister acknowledged that the Russian army was still battling tens of thousands of Ukrainian forces in the area. Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, is under heavy assault, according to its mayor. The parliaments of Estonia and Latvia have declared Russia's activities in Ukraine to be genocide. The Battle of Kyiv has been praised by U.S. Vice President Joe Biden as an historic triumph for Ukrainians. According to Biden, Vladimir Putin's authority over Mariupol is debatable, and there is no indication yet that the port city has fallen fully. A new shipment of military equipment, including transport trucks and ammunition, has arrived in Ukraine from Spain. Denmark has upped its arms donation to Ukraine by 600 million euros. On the 58th day, fears are mounting for the hundreds of people trapped in Mariupol's Azovstal steel mill. If Ukrainian soldiers surrendered, Russia's defense ministry indicated it would let people leave the steelworks. However, according to a source, Russian soldiers are continuing to attack the plant. According to the UN Human Rights Office, there is mounting evidence of war crimes in Ukraine. Next week, the chief of the United Nations nuclear watchdog will pay a visit to Ukraine's Chernobyl nuclear power facility. Rafael Grossi will transport critical supplies as well as to conduct radiological and other evaluations. Boris Johnson has stated that he will fix gaps in the UK-India trade agreement to guarantee that UK goods to India are not utilized in Russian armaments. A military cargo jet from Ukraine, the Antonov An-26, crashed in a field near Mikhailivka, a settlement in the Zaporizhizhia region. The next day, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko warns that Russia's invasion of Ukraine is only the beginning and that Moscow has plans to take over neighboring nations. A Russian commander has stated that Russia wants complete control of southern Ukraine, which would allow it access to Transnistria. 
Moldova's foreign ministry announced on Friday that it had summoned Moscow's ambassador to express grave concern about the general's remarks. On day 60, U.S. Secretary of State Tony Blinken and his Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin will visit Kyiv on the 60th day of their presidency. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky has stated that his country would request additional heavy weaponry from the U.S. A three-month-old infant was among the eight persons killed when Russia launched cruise missiles toward the Black Seaport city of Odessa. On the 61st day, Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister declares that no agreement has been reached with Russia about the creation of a humanitarian corridor for civilians to exit the Mariupol steel mill. On Monday morning, Ukraine was subjected to an unusually protracted air raid warning lasting two hours. In less than an hour, Russian aircraft targeted five railway stations in central and western Ukraine. Two oil depots in Bryansk, fewer than 100 miles from the Ukrainian border, caught fire. The United States has promised an additional $713 million to assist Ukraine in its military effort. According to Ukrainian officials, a Russian missile damaged a major bridge linking the southern Odessa area with neighboring Romania on the 62nd day. If Britain's direct provocation persists, Russia's defense ministry warns of an urgent, proportional retaliation. A Russian minister refuses to rule out the possibility of Transnistria, Moldova's separatist province, being pushed into the Ukraine war. Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, has traveled to Moscow in an attempt to position the UN at the center of Ukrainian mediation efforts. Russia has rejected Ukraine's request to hold peace talks in Mariupol, the country's port city. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister stated that the UN would be pointless if a humanitarian corridor was not established. The Chief of the United Nations Nuclear Inspector has spoken out against Russia's annexation of Chernobyl. Germany will approve the supply of anti-aircraft systems to Ukraine. The energy provider Gazprom has blocked gas deliveries to Poland and Bulgaria for the 63rd day, forcing crisis meetings in European capitals. Moldova's interior minister said that Moldova has been targeted by Ukraine, while Russian soldiers have taken control of the town of Zurich. Russian missiles have struck a weapon storage in Ukraine's Zaporizhia region, which has armaments from the US and Europe. The Ukrainian military is bracing for a possible Russian escalation in Transnistria a breakaway region of Ukraine. On the 64th day, Russia's foreign ministry issued a strong warning to Western nations over Ukraine's invitation to attack Russian soil. The southern Ukrainian city of Kherson, which Russia claims to have occupied, will switch to the ruble on May 1st. More than 8,500 suspected war crimes perpetrated by Russian forces in Ukraine are being investigated. Efforts are underway to get emergency contraception into Ukrainian hospitals as soon as possible. On the 65th day, two thunderous explosions shook Kyiv on the next day as UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres toured the sites of murders and mass graves. Russia's defense ministry claimed its forces used high-precision long-range missiles to target the production facilities of a space rocket facility in Kyiv. With the final militants holding Mariupol, Ukraine wants to rescue citizens trapped in the Azovstal steel complex. In the Kursk area of Russia, a checkpoint in the Russian settlement of Krupets came under fire. On the 66th day, the Pentagon press secretary spoke out against Vladimir Putin's cruelty and depravity in Ukraine, calling his conduct unconscionable and his reasons BS. According to EU officials, countries in the EU are poised to accept a phased embargo on Russian oil as soon as next week. The condition inside the besieged steel mill, according to a Ukrainian officer, is beyond a humanitarian calamity. Hundreds of people are stuck within the Mariupol complex, including 60 young kids. With the final fighters defending the city, Ukraine wants to rescue residents trapped in the steel factory. The names of two British humanitarian workers, supposedly kidnapped by Russian soldiers in Ukraine, have been released. Investigators from the United Kingdom will be dispatched to Ukraine to assist in the collection of evidence of war crimes, including sexual assault. 900 remains have been discovered in mass graves since Russia retreated from Kyiv, according to the Ukrainian president. Finally, on the 67th day, civilians are being evacuated from Mariupol's Azovstal steelworks, where an estimated 1,000 people are hiding. According to the Ukrainian president, the first batch of 100 people was carried away late Sunday afternoon. The conflict in Ukraine has been described by Pope Francis as a macabre retreat of humanity that causes him suffer and mourn. Angelina Jolie paid a visit to Lviv on Saturday to meet with displaced individuals, according to the regional governor. Since 2011, Jolie has served as 
the UNHCR Special Envoy for Refugees. The Foreign Office of the United Kingdom is looking into claims that a British person has been arrested by Russian authorities. According to Ukraine's Deputy Agricultural Minister, Russian soldiers had seized several hundred thousand tons of food. Now, as you can perceive, the war has already crossed its two months time period so far. Russian aggression against Ukraine has not stopped yet. Rather, Putin is blackmailing the West and NATO of Russia's retaliation and World War III. So what's your take on the current scenario? Do you think World War III is becoming inevitable gradually? Tell us in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Until then, peace.